Healthful, refreshing, delicious, double mint chewing gum presents for your listening pleasure, Broadway's My Beat. Broadway's My Beat, from Times Square to Columbus Circle, the gaudiest, the most violent, the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway's My Beat, the thrilling drama of murder and mystery and the people who walk the great white way, with Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. Chew delicious double mint gum often every day and see how much more you enjoy things. The refreshing double mint flavor makes your mouth and throat feel cool and comfortable. The smooth, easy chewing gives you a bright little lift. So at work or pleasure, indoors or out, enjoy chewing delicious double mint gum. Beginning of August, the month of the steam heat, and Broadway staggers up to a corner, leans against a lamppost, bewildered. Where are the summer dreams as concerns Far Rockaway and the seashore and the girlies in the two-piece suits? Where the sun and the you-kissed golden girl who filled the ticklish part of your brain? They're on the poster offering you a glass of beer. So have a drink with her and hit the sidewalks again. And walk again. September and another dream aren't far away. And at police headquarters, the municipally conditioned air and the man in the suit for the occasion. Silk sear sucker, boys, the latest weave. You like it, Mugovan? Dandy. And what do you call the color? Oh, this eggshell. Eggshell. Hey, it's a nice blend, huh, with the pale pink shirt, huh? Think so, Danny? I'm sorry you mentioned it. I was going to point it out. All right. So you're going to hold me or are you not going to hold me? Because if the former, I would like to give you instructions as to the care of these garments. Because what if are you these... talking about, Mike? Huh? The lieutenant asked what you're talking about. <laughs> Look, don't speak to me like I'm an idiot. I asked you a simple question. Why? What do you mean, why? Throw him out, Margaret. Wait till I wash my hands. I don't want to get the garment. Okay, all right, okay. I'm going. I drop in here friendly in two minutes flat. You hate me. Hello? Mike. What? Come back here, Mike. What's this all about? Why'd you come down here and ask whether we wanted to hold you? Because if you don't, I gotta go to Atlantic City. You see, we carbonated beverage people. We are having a convention. Nobody's down questioned I'm... whether you're legitimate or not, Mike. Well, thank you. Thanks. Well, it's just this way, Danny. You see, Floyd Decker murdered. I figured that uh, you were question... But Floyd Decker. And me and him lumped together under the title gangster in the old days. When was he I... murdered? Huh? When was he... Wait, wait, wait. You mean that you don't know? No. Ooh. I'm beginning to see the light. Boys, I am... When was he murdered? To... Listen, the word on the street is that he got it. Three days he's been gone from wherever he usually comes to, and the word is that he ain't no more. Once more, Mike, why'd you come here? Well, Floyd and I, we had an argument a few days ago, and he getting bumped, you know. I figured that you'd want to talk to me before I sat in convention at Atlantic... I, uh, hmm. Ain't found the body yet, huh? Uh-uh. Well, what am I talking to you like I'm an idiot for? Boys, goodbye. Take it easy. Don't pinch the silk seer sucker, Mugovan. No body, no murder, no nothing. Me neither. I'll send Taffy. Tableau, then, of hot room and bewildered policemen and the whir of an electric fan and the irate motorist two stories down. Background for the shattering question. You think he lost his marbles? Followed by the glassy stare. Okay, okay, I'll find out. Two hours later, followed by the phone call. He wasn't kidding, Danny. Word has it that Floyd Decker is dead. Murdered. Followed by 36 hours. And then the river. Here, take a look, Danny. Yeah. Floyd? Yeah, it's Floyd Decker, all right. Been in the water three, four days. How was he found? Uh, you see that kid over there? Mm. The one on the piling getting ready to dive? Yeah. He can hold his breath for 90 seconds. Uh, during a small contest where the kid just moved in the neighborhood, he saw Floyd midway up, bumping against the pier. Okay. You want to talk to Mike Paulus now? Uh-huh. Call Atlantic City and have the police relay the message that I'd like to talk to him. <laughs> 
Uh, you don't have in mind sending anybody down to Atlantic City to see Mike gets back, do you? No, in a word. Well, in another word, my wife wouldn't let me go anyhow. Who won, Lieutenant? Have a seat, Mike. How's the convention going? Ah, uh, you know how these things go. Oh, then we're not dragging you, you away. You are not dragging me away from anything. You understand that, don't you? Now, look. Look, you... I got word that you wanted to see me, and I ducked the caucus should we go into canned soda pop, and I got the face train in, only on account of you requested me. Requested me, Danny, not dragged. Requested because... you. Yeah, okay. We found Floyd Decker. I heard. Fished him out of the East River. I heard, I heard. Stabbed in the back and thrown in the river. You said you had an argument with him. That's right. About what? Money. Well, come on, tell me about it. Well, you know Floyd. You know his background nearly as good as me. What's he been doing? Well, you know he's been on 11 weight five, six years, eh? Yeah. Well, I went up on the same rap with him, Danny, income tax. Only... I got out a few years earlier because I am nicely behaved, be it the penitentiary or be it a parlor. And you know, Floyd, well, Not very is... well. Well, he's impe... He's imp... Impe impetuous. Impetuous. Yeah, I'd have got it myself if you gave me time. Well, he gave the feds all sorts of trouble, you see, so he didn't join us until his full 20 years. Now, you ask what's he doing, so I answer. He's been a bum. Oh? A panhandling bum. That's how he lived, huh? Yeah. And the argument you had with him? It's about dough. I got tired of giving him handouts like everybody else. Everybody else? On the street, everybody else. Listen, Floyd was the type of fella can best be described as misfit. You can ask your head shrinker how many of those there are around. You got any idea who killed him? No. Nope. Anybody you know didn't like him enough? To... Everybody. Why? Well, all the world hates a failure. Well, uh, let me put it this way. All the world feels sorry for a failure... Until they got to bail him out, and then all the world hates a failure. People on the street got tired of supporting him, is that it? Well, I would say that uh, that's an apt appraisal of the situation, yeah. When did the word first get out that he was murdered? Let's see, when it would be, oh, about last Monday. Then that'd be about it. So, as uh, soon as he didn't show up one day with the outstretched hand, everybody was going, uh-huh. Uh-huh, meaning that somebody stabbed him in the back and put him in the East River. Also an apt appraisal. Yeah. Last make we had on him was a boarding house in the Bowery, Mike, but it's old. and He's been gone from there for a couple of years. Well, I wouldn't know where he lived. Also, his sheet says he had a wife. Yeah, Alma. Yeah, that's right, Alma. Well, I'd canvas the bars along third, Danny. I would look for a blonde, turning gray, dyed back to blonde. She's kind of tall, kind of slender, and kind of tired. She's kind of an inside laugher and crier. She's likable. She drinks Third Avenue scotch and never gets loaded. It's a nice woman. Likable. Then he offered his hand, made the clasp, and the smile of good citizenship proffered the breath of gin and taffy and went out again to find a train to find the world of Atlantic City again. <laughs> Leg work now. The bars of 3rd Avenue, alternate establishments between hand laundries, delicatessens, used furniture, used bric-a-brac, used clothing, and good-as-new women's wear. The bars of 3rd Avenue, which progress from respectability to the thin edge of limbo. Pose the name Alma Decker, also description, and get the shake of the head, the shrug, and sometimes the thumb jerk over the shoulder. Downtown, further downtown, mister. And where Third began to leave the village, for the afternoon drunk sought the shady gutters and draftiest halls, in a bar wedged between a fire-gutted building and an herbologist, there was a woman seated at a table. Sure. My name's Alma. She said, holding high the glass and trying to find the sunlight through it. <laughs> Finding something else and hating it. And him? This boy seated across from me and adoring me? I do. I do adore you, Alma, very much. His name is Edwin. My name is Edwin Hempel, a man's man. Drink it down. 
Drink it down, drink it down. Sit down, Edwin. <laughs> He's drunk. What's your name? Danny Clover. Cop? Mm-hmm. About my husband? That's right. What about him? Did you kill him? He's dead, huh? Hey, Edwin. Floyd's dead. Did you hear me? I drink him a toast. A man's... Oh, shut up. <coughs> What'd you do that for? Where'd they find Floyd? What'd you do that for anyway? The river. That's nice. Some of our best friends have been found on the river, Danny. Of course, not recently, but there was a day when Floyd was up. Yeah, I heard. I'm nice. I'm nice to you. Please don't do that again. What's this boy doing here? Please, Ask please, him. please. I swear I haven't quite figured it out myself. Are you? I'm nice to her. He's been to college. I've had a year of college, sir. Edwin. Yes, Alma? <laughs> Let's not be ridiculous, that's all. <laughs> I quote from Cyrano. I always do. Saying, it comes to me from all sides that I am jeered at, that... <laughs> Edwin passed out early this afternoon, Danny. It's turning into the kind of day when I might end up with nothing. Right, Danny? Whatever kind of work you do, I'm sure you've noticed how it's the long, dull jobs that sort of get you down. You get so bored with doing the same thing over and over. Well, next time that happens, find out what a lot of help it is to chew delicious double mint gum. You see, as soon as you sink your teeth into a stick of smooth double mint, you enjoy a feeling of real satisfaction. And you'll like the steady, natural rhythm of chewing. Delicious Double Mint is a long-lasting treat, too. You can chew away for as long as you like, and you have something you enjoy doing while you go on with your work. And that cool, clean Double Mint flavor is so refreshing, it gives you a pleasant lift, so you feel better, and things seem to go faster and easier. Yes, Delicious Double Mint gum is a pleasant chewing treat that's helpful as well as enjoyable. So buy several packages at a time, and treat yourself to a stick at work or anywhere. That's double mint chewing gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. We now continue with Broadway's My Beat, written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and starring Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover. <laughs> In the high blaze of summer, Broadway walks soft and slow. The dream walk, the careless walk, rhythm to a regret for things that have not yet been. Because other summers have flowed in this street and other winds, and in their ebb, the erratic gutter dance of the litter of the season. Snapshot of the tennis girl whose hair was braided and who was summer love. Snapshot torn in half, then torn again, and once more. The phone number scrawled in lipstick on a barroom napkin that rang on emptiness. No answer, the code for last summer. But this time it'll be different. So walk into it, but soft. And at headquarters, a room of a thousand transients. Room where interrogations are made and motives poised and concern shown. Where's Edwin? What'd you do to him? Booked him, put him in the drunk tank, Mrs. Decker. A kid like that? Drinks with a lady, gets a little high, ends in a heap in a drunk tank. Too bad. Where'd you meet a boy like that? Don't get subtle with me. Don't say boy to me. I just asked tone. you where you'd met him. On Coney. Middle of May. I was sitting there. He came up and asked if he could talk to me. I said, sure, talk to me. You kill your husband, Mrs. Decker? Just right out? Did you kill your husband, Mrs. Decker? It's going to be like that, huh? Uh-huh. No, I did not kill my husband. I don't know who did. I don't know why he suddenly got that important, so... Mrs. Decker. Let me finish. I gave the desk sergeant where I live. So if you ever want to chat some more about young men or about the dead, come around, because I'm not going anyplace. Okay? Yeah, for now. Like you said, Mrs. Decker, 
Don't go anyplace. <laughs> At the door, she stopped, looked back at me. And chemistry that is in summer light lay against her face and sped youth across it. Her hands went to the back of her throat, stroked back her hair. She opened her mouth to speak. And there was no sound. Then she turned and left. It took four hours to find him find the man I was looking for, needed to talk to. Man of all trades, man on the move, man of shouts and man of whispers, listener and purveyor of Broadway secrets, Benny Fane, Hawaiian sports shirt, beer in hand, leaning gracefully against the jukebox of Maury's Third Avenue Bar and Grill. Uh, be my, uh, my guest, Danny. Take this quarter for me by yourself, whatever dream music your heart desires. <laughs> You're doing fine, huh, Benny? Oh, uh, The Hawaiian yeah, sport I... shirt, free with two-bit pieces. Hey, this shirt's a present. From whom, Benny? What are you implying, Danny? I heisted it, I crimped it off a rack in a garment center? You said it was a present. If it wasn't, would it fit so well, the shoulders through here tailored to my measure, Danny? On the insistence of a young woman who was grateful for me for... Say, you, you ain't been looking for me for, 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 for four hours, Danny, just to ask how come I wear silk. No. Floyd Decker, huh? Uh-huh. Anything you've heard that... Uh... I, 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 I didn't hear. I, I saw him. Of when? Three or four nights ago, uh, prior to his river bit. Well, go on. Floyd uh, finds me by asking around by methods just like you did. Danny. No, no, no hard feelings, Danny. I'm telling you the bit. What happened? Floyd finds me, asks me where is the crap game. A big crap game. Right off, I laughs in his face. Why? Well, uh, first, how would I know where's a crap game? Second, if I knew and such things were truly happening around Broadway, crap games, what would Floyd Decker be using for scratch, for, for, for juice, for, for bankroll? Floyd the beggar? Floyd the, the panhandler? Well, you could have knocked me down Danny. with a... Well, I'm, I'm giving you the bit, Danny. Floyd flashes a roll at least as fat as five G's. He, he he let me feel it. Yeah, it, it, it was 5G's. My eyes opened very wide. I say, where you get chowdy like this, Floyd? Floyd says, where's that crap game? And I, I, I say, I, I, I don't know, Floyd. I swear. Well, he, he leaves. Next whisper on the breeze about this Benny, remarks. Benny. Uh, uh, Floyd blew the juice, lost it. The whole 5,000. So I guess he was able to find a crap game without my help. That's the bit, Danny. And if you ever want a high wine shirt, I know exactly uh, sure, where you... Sure, sure you do. Thanks, Benny. I'll, I'll see you around. Good morning, Danny. Good morning, Gino. Uh, would Early you... morning and already a scorcher. Uh, Gino, uh, do something for me. Yeah. Mrs. T often says to me, it would seem, Mr. Sergeant Tartaglia, you were put on earth for the sole purpose of doing things for your Danny Cole. Call downstairs. Get Edwin Hempel released to my custody. Have them bring him up here. No sooner said. Morning, Detective Muggerman. Pardon, but I am on a mission for Danny Cole. And the pleasantry... Yeah, 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 I understand, Gino. Hi, right, Danny. What's Gino's You're mission? You're bringing the Hempel kid up here. Oh. Oh, that story Benny Fang gave you? Yeah, what about it? I did what you told me. Walked Broadway, stopped a few people, asked questions. Well? It checks out. What Benny Fang told you checks out. Floyd Decker lost $5,000 in a crap game. Hmm. You know where the game No, and I'll tell you why. Because it was explained to me by several persons at Broadway uh, like this. The heat and the humidity, they do something to the brain cells, especially the memory valves. Uh, no one remembers where the game was, is that it? That's right. They wouldn't tell me. I brought him down here. I said, uh, in this uh, cooler, said in this cooler atmosphere, maybe their <laughs> memory valves would... Uh, yeah, anyone know where Decker got the 5,000? Uh, that they don't know for sure. They don't know how a broken down panhandling bum got 5,000 together. All they know is he lost it and left the game and... In here, Edwin. This way to see Danny Clover. Well, that's all, Gino. Thanks. Sit here, Edwin. Well, this is Detective Muggerman. Hi, Edwin. How do you feel? I asked. I heard you. Well, then answer me. How do you feel? Hungover? 
Dirty, ashamed. Now you'll answer me something? What? Mrs. Decker, Alma. What did you do with Alma? What kind of... You like her a lot, don't you? Well, maybe it's the wrong word. Maybe I should have said you love her Still a lot. not the right word. Not like, not love? Uh, give us the right word, Edwin. I worship her. I worship the ground she walks on. I adore her. You know the true, the, the literal meaning of the word adore? Mrs. Decker's over 40, Edwin, over twice your age. 40 years old. So she said twice as long to get, twice as lonely as... As you, Edwin? The first day I saw her, very first day, I, I said to myself, there's a very lonely and a very beautiful woman. She has solitude, and there is sorrow on her brow. Well, this was at Coney Island. A week I watched her, how she came to the beach in beauty, all by herself. Men tried to get fresh. She'd say something, they'd go away like their mouths had been struck. But she didn't send you away. No. And I know why. Why? Because the kind of woman Alma is. Because she saw right away I was offering my heart at her feet and my soul. If you knew, if, if you knew the life of sorrow and bitterness that woman had led. Tell us about it, Edwin. What it was to be married to a man who had been glorious and who was now a, a shell, a ruin. You mean she hated Floyd? Hated him because he was a bum, a beggar, and once no, he was... No, no, a... not hatred. But bound to him and chained. Because once she had been Caesar's wife, faithful and loyal, and she still... But get off it, will you, Edwin? I didn't have my year in college, so get off it. Just tell us. It's simple, really, what I'm telling you. Alma was married to a man who was once a sort of king who fell in favor. But still, Alma was his wife. All he had left of his riches. And therefore, Alma was unapproachable and lonely and must sit on a swarming, infested beach with a ridiculous young man. Who I told her how to get out of it, though. How she could rid herself of it. Rid herself of Floyd? And I know the formula with which you gain freedom. Go on. You buy it. You get money and buy it. I told Alman, and she thought it a splendid idea and, and, and said she knew where to get money to buy herself from Floyd. There's another way to get free from someone. You mean to kill him? No. It was much simpler to buy it. Especially if he's a beggar like Floyd was, like... Yeah. You want to see Alma, Edwin? Of course. I... Come on. I'll take you to her. dear. You hurt? I hurt you? No, dear. Oh, stop that. Stop that dear business. Mind if we come in? Come on. You don't want a drink, do you, Edwin? He wouldn't let me. Would you let me? No. Just sit down. I said to you once, Danny, I said you want to chat about young men or about the dead to come around. Is that what you're doing now? That's right. Which? Both. Well, I'll sit over here and rest elbows on knees and chin in hand and listen. Edmund told me about the kind of life you had with Floyd. How he was a fallen Caesar. <laughs> Ain't he a kick, that Edmund? Well, he was, kind of. <laughs> well, he was. Whatever he was, Mrs. Decker, it was pretty rough, huh? Is that what you heard? But he didn't work. And yet he was a bum. Your husband was a bum, Alma. Whatever he might have been in the old days, truly, he was a bum. He went to college, he ought to know. But how did your husband get $5,000? What? Before he died, that's the amount of money your husband suddenly had. Well? Where'd he get it? A man like him? A man like him. With his connections? He didn't have a connection in the world. The people he knew and you say he didn't have connections. Let's try it this way, Mrs. Decker. Where did you get the $5,000 to give to your husband? Who said I gave him five... My tongue slipped here. I blurted it out. Bless your heart. What harm? No harm at all, Edwin. I wanted your heart blessed. Well, then, dear, I also told them what for. 
Edwin said you tried to buy off your husband. Oh, I did. I gave him the money. He said he'd never bother me again. He lost it all in a crap game. He said he was going away with the money. He could buy himself a stake in a small setup in Vegas. Instead, he finds a crap game in a garage off Broadway. When he came back here and, and started to plead and whine, that's when I walked in and stuck him in the back of the knife. Get him. Get the collegian. Is that the way it happened? What do you want from me? Don't you tell him anything. Listen, you... I stabbed him in the back. He wants to be a hero. Listen. What? Everything. All of it's drained away now, anyhow. He came back, he fell on his knees, and he cried like a baby. Like he's been doing ever since he's out of Leavenworth. Recalling the old days. And then he came for me. It was the scissors. Where'd you get the money? Mike. Mike Paulus. In court, I'll swear it wasn't. My husband says to me... You know what he had the nerve to say to her? Honey, it's so easy for you to get all that money, get more. How do you like that? And this one's what I'm left with. This little nothing with his one year at business college to buy me cheese sandwiches, to drive me around in a 29 car. Don't believe her. Oh? He wants you to know that besides the cheese sandwiches, he helped me throw my husband in the river. Didn't you, Edwin? Yes, I did, dear. Yes, I did, dear. He's what I got, Danny. Now put us away. In the minutes before dawn, Broadway lies huddled in a dreamless sleep. And the silent street is a part of it. The long night, the time of no stars, and the muted wind. And then from far away, listen, the whispers gather and take away the night. It's Broadway, the gaudiest, the most violent, and the lonesomest mile in the world. Broadway. My beat. Refreshing double mint chewing gum is really two treats in one. A satisfying, long-lasting chewing treat and a delicious flavor treat. That's a pleasant combination for real enjoyment and for a good many welcome helps that mean a lot when you need them. For example, when you get hungry in between meals, chew a stick of double mint, and you'll find it's easier to wait until mealtime. You see, the smooth chewing is satisfying and gives you something pleasant to do. And double mint is light and agreeable, never rich or heavy. The cool, clean double mint flavor freshens your taste and sweetens your breath, too. Yes, delicious double mint gum gives you a good deal of enjoyment and many pleasant helps, all at a mighty low cost. So try it soon, at work or pleasure, indoors or out. Enjoy delicious double mint chewing gum. Costs so little, tastes so good, lasts so long. The makers of double mint chewing gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story and that you are enjoying delicious double mint gum every day. Broadway's My Beat, brought to you by Double Mint Chewing Gum, is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed and conducted by Alexander Courage. The program is written by Morton Fine and David Friedkin, and stars Larry Thor as Detective Danny Clover, with Charles Calvert as Tartaglia and Jack Crucian as Mugovan. In tonight's story, Kathy Lewis was heard as Alma, Lee Millar as Edwin, Sheldon Leonard as Mike, and Leo Cleary as Benny. Bill Anders speaking. This is the CBS Radio Network.